All right, so we saved our black um, vector file as an EPS and we brought it into Photoshop. And when I do that, I see little traces left over from where we were using that live paint bucket. Even though you don't see those when you go into Illustrator. And so I did some experimenting and I tried to fix it with the blob brush tool, but still that residual kind of residue from the live paint bucket that I used to fill in the inside of the hand is still there. And so what it is, is just like when you live trace something, you have to expand it before it, it's not separated. So you see how all of these layers under this live paint group, it's just kind of an extra step. So if we select all of those, it will give me the option, just like when we live trace, to expand. And by doing that, it should make it so I can merge everything using the Pathfinder. And there we go. So now it's all merged together. And that's what I was looking for, to keep it kind of simple and rational. So when it wouldn't let me merge before is because I simply hadn't hit expand for live paint. Now, because of that, because it's merged, now I could go in and I can cut my own knuckles in if I wanted to. Let me just see how those would look. Yeah, and I think I like the simplicity of not having them. So it's, it's always good to kind of verify that. Okay, so what's great about having your vector is you can save it as an EPS. And you can keep on working on it until you get that perfect black cutout, right? You save as the EPS onto your desktop. When you view it, you can double click and you can view it to check it in um, preview. And now I can see there isn't any residual shape. You know, everything's nice and clean. But you'll also notice that the black is not as solid black as your computer can give. And that's because the default saving of an EPS in Illustrator is, is in CMYK mode, which is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black mode, not RGB mode, which just uses the, the lights in the computer. And we'll learn more about that as we learn more about printing. But what I'm going to do now is take that new EPS, I've saved it, and I'm going to bring that into Photoshop drag and drop it in and because we dragged and dropped the EPS whoops, into Photoshop why are you not letting me do that auto select all right um, that allows me to scale it with command T And it will always kind of live rasterize to whatever the, the best format is because it stays as a vector. And we want to keep our black as a vector. But notice the black is actually kind of a warm black. And it's not quite as black as a solid RGB black in Photoshop would be. So how can we, if we wanted that, like that super dark black, not the CMYK black, what could we do? Well, because it's a vector, we can do all the kind of layer styles that we played with first with our cartoon jumble exercise. And the easiest one is just do color overlay and just replace it with solid black. So you'll notice as you output a black logo from Illustrator as an EPS, it will be a slightly duller, a slightly lighter black than the RGB black in Photoshop. So you double click on it, you say color overlay, and you make it solid black. And OK. And what I love about the, the layer effects, the layer styles, is you can toggle them on and off. Right. Now, there's other layer effects that are also very help, help, helpful for your black and white logo before you print it. My favorite is Drop Shadow. And I have a few settings for my Drop Shadow. Notice that I've given it some noise. 
I have it at about 20% opacity, and I have it angled at a 42 degree angle. I can play with that. I have it spread, but it gives it this kind of old world charm, you know, like a 1960s company of people ruining the environment. Masters of the universe kind of thing. All right, other effects we could play with. What if I wanted to give the whole thing a stroke? Also very common among the powerful in the 1950s and 60s. But this stroke, I can design to be solid white. I can design it to be thicker, right, or thinner. Or I can design it to be a stroke like that. Then I can duplicate it, and then I can rasterize the duplicate. So notice, instead of just rasterizing the layer, you can rasterize the layer style. And then I can add a stroke to the stroke. But this time I'm going to make it black. And let's slim that down. This is a little bit of piping. You know, if I just really need it to show up. And these are all just effects that can be turned off and on right within Photoshop without ever rasterizing your vector. So I think I'm just going to make my stroke, I like my white stroke, gives it a little bit of extra crispness at the edge before you get to the drop shadow. But I'll slim it down a little bit. Okay, and that's good. So if this is print ready, if I feel like this is my, my black version of my logo that I, I like the best, or maybe I just want it with no effects at all, or just with color overlay, I can do all that, right? I'm going to say save as, and this is going to be Carl assignment six black logo as a Photoshop file to the desktop. Now, in order to print it, I have to do a few things. I have to flatten it, layer flatten the image, which then takes it out of being a vector anymore. And I have to save it as a TIFF file. And this is the first time we've used TIFF, T-I-F-F, -F, which is an archive file format to the desktop. And instead of it just being Carl Assignment 6 Black Logo, I'm going to put a PR in front of it. It stands for Print Ready or public relations. You know, this is the one I'm putting out into the world. The reason I flatten it and save it as a TIFF, I flatten it to save memory, because you don't want to print something that's more memory than it needs to be, because it can make the printer go slow, and the, the printer has to buffer, then it's not going to print well. And I can also save it as an LZW compression, which is a magic compression, which doesn't take any quality away from the image, but makes it less um, memory hungry. LZW works best with TIFF. So it's what's called a lossless compression format. So now, if I go to my desktop, I have a black logo saved as a TIFF, flattened and saved with LZW to save memory. Let's compare those two. Let's compare the PSD. Look at the Git info. That is five megabytes, not a lot, because it's just black and white and gray. But then the TIFF, that is only one megabyte, right? For the exact same amount of quality for printing. So that's why when we make something print ready, we're gonna go through those steps. Okay, now let's play with color. But I'm not gonna use my PR TIFF for that. I'm gonna go back to my PSD. Just like I can add effects um, on the black logo, if I make a duplicate of it, I can add effects that are colored, right? And I can play with different colors, and especially I can play with different gradients and color ranges, right? Just like we played with with our um, cartoon jumble. And I can play with the different opacities of these and how they mix together. So I kind of like that. So really simple. 
It doesn't take a lot to have a nice color solution. But with the kind of grainy, noisy drop shadow, this color looks a little flat. So I might even give it, this is where you can really experiment with these different layer styles. I can give the vector maybe a, a texture. And I can play with those texture settings and decide how deep the texture should go, how contrasted it is. I can make it really subtle or really strong, really deep. I think that looks pretty good. Kind of shows the paper texture. There we go. Take the depth down a little bit. But the limitations to coloring in Photoshop are the limitations, if we don't want to rasterize it and we want to keep this as a smart layer, as a vector, you're limited to what you can do within your, your layer styles, which means it treats the whole thing the same way, right? Now you can keep layering different duplicates of your vector and you can get some pretty complex results. So if I duplicate this again and then I play with a color overlay that's totally different, like let's try this one. And then I just take its opacity way down. And then I take the overall layer and I blend that in. So you can get some, you know, weird results, but it's always gonna treat the whole vector all at once because you're not allowed to break it up. So what if I wanted one color on the hand and another on the globe? I could do that in Photoshop, but I'd have to rasterize it, right? I'd have to only save part of the logo as a new layer. So instead, we learn to color within Illustrator as well. Now, as long as you have a vector that's a black vector that you made as an EPS in Illustrator, I don't care on this project if you color it in Illustrator, if you color it in Photoshop, or if you use some combination of both. As long as you have a black shape EPS, but I will show you both. So that's, let's say, the color version I like best in Photoshop. So I'm going to save that as Carl Assignment 6 color logo. This might be the one I decide to print instead. And I save it to the desktop as a PSD. And if I want to make it print ready, I say save as a TIFF and put a PR in front of it. But wait. I also want to make sure LZW is used. And because TIFFs can support layers, but don't usually, they're not usually used that way, it reminds me to flatten my image if I'm saving it as a TIFF. So I don't need to flatten it. It will save all the layers, but it just wastes memory, right? So I saved it, but I should also, now that it's the PR color version, I should also flatten the image and then save it again. Make sure it has all the selections I like. So now I save my TIFF. So now I've got two things I can print. Now I can go back to Illustrator and I can show you how we can do some of that coloring within that program. In some ways it's more annoying, in some ways it has more options. Okay, so what I usually do is once I've refined and finished my logo, I clean up my different layers and my assets and I'm gonna delete the ones I'm not using, right? And then I'm going to label one, the black logo underneath, and then I'm going to make a duplicate of it. Command C, new layer on top, edit, paste in place, and I'm gonna label this one color logo, right? Then I can turn off this one. So, how do you color within Illustrator? Well, it's as simple as instead of using black as your fill, you can choose something else as your fill. Now, I just choose red, and look how it shows up. Not as red as gray. That is because we used Live Trace. And the problem with using some of the Illustrator tools like Live Trace or, or Live Paint Bucket 
is they're very helpful, but they will limit the options within Illustrator.